Bonjour everyone! Hudson and the Bear here, we're back in Magic Kingdom. I know it's rare, but it's time to revisit and you come along with us to be our guest. You guys let us know that there's a new menu at Be Our Guest, so we are here to try another prefix menu. You guys told us, so here we are to eat. Be sure to ask the dishes. You heard the girl. about a rosé and a castle with a story about a rose, it just sort of makes sense. But as I drink this, before I drink this, I just wonder, where is Bree's castle? Am I sitting on the staff? I feel like I'm sitting on the staff. Hope it's not one of my people. That would be weird. Ooh. Very, very fruity. In a good way, like sweet, very front of the mouth, but like you said, I was like tartness in name, and I like the rough tartness, like a, a drier wine, like um, a really, really like ripe grape before it loses the sweetness. I like that. Four and a half out of five plus. Continuing our journey with these new Magic Kingdom cocktails, every sit down restaurant has gotten at least two. I guess it's be our guest. Seems to think that it's special. I don't know why. Maybe it's the magic. Maybe it's the snow, the rose, the beast walking around. They get three. Seems a bit unfair. I'm starting off with the French 75. Champagne, gin, and lemonade. Which sounds right up my alley. Two for the gin part. Got lemon shavings in it. Chilling on top like little like lemon logs. Oh. It's interesting because I up and put the lemon on my tongue. That felt really good. It's very like lemonade forward. You can barely taste the gin. You get a little sparkle of the champagne. The champagne unfortunately is not vegan. So none for the princess, more for me. I feel like I've seen the Three Musketeers one too many times. Either way, I still kind of like it. Three and a half out of five. I like this drink, but every single time I sip, I get like another thread of the lemon, the shaved lemon. It's not enjoyable. I'm reducing my rating to two and a half out of five claws just based on that. I can understand like a small lemon wedge, but like the shavings of the rind, just too much. It's like pulp, almost. probably come here for the bread. Not this bread, but the bread. Nice fluffy in-house rolls. Not as warm and crisp as I would like, but they're still got a nice inside, soft inside. You get butter here. Is it salted butter? Yeah, you got a little salted butter. No like weird exotic salts, but you got it. 
which I suppose is a thing. Maybe I want enchanted salt. Lie to me a little bit. I want some of that Mickey magic. It's a solid house left. It doesn't lose any points, but it's not getting in the ground either. It'll do as a appetizer appetizer. Two and a half out of five points. So we have this beautiful potato leek soup. Potatoes all on the bottom. They told me to stir. They, they did the China thing. They encouraged me to stir. I'm kind of glad that I got a soup instead of a salad because I feel like the last two years that we've been coming here, maybe three, it's always been a salad. This seems slimy and potentially satisfying. The potato is a soaked chip which is interesting. And the leek is very salt forward. I feel like if they reduce the amount of salt, it would be really good. I think as is, I think it's like a little bit of more, like a uh, more seasoning, a little more pepper. As it is, I'm gonna give it a two and a half out of five soups. It's a little leaky. So, so the princess has trained me rail well. I take the soup, I scoop away from the ball. If I can get a piece. Somewhere in there. She's better at this than I am. Break it down for the uncultured of us, like myself. Think potato soup with leek flavored chips. And you're about there. Excellent. Four and a half out of five points. So, here we have the duck and leek tar tare, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. It is like a pureed duck and pork in a loaf with like little baguette circles, pickles, and then this uh, house-made jam. Now, you basically construct it, these things are super thin, you construct it like a little party sandwich, basically. Always the fine dining restaurants, they want to give you fancy things and make you construct it yourself. If I got to do it myself, I could have did it at home. Because you know, I'm going to puree duck and cut pickles this small with a jam and eat it. We probably would. If you ever followed us on any other socials and seen us during like New Year's Eve, we would probably do this. A little duck and pork boat. That is a nice, like, sour and sweet punch. The pickle with the, the, the tare helps the gaminess of the duck, and it's just delicious. Absolutely delicious. I'm usually kind of like on the fence to be our guest. So far, the appetizer and the rest of this is good. I'm impressed. Four and a half out of five plus. I just wish it was a little bit more. Not me doing all the work. This is your new vegan option, a mutant-sized piece of zucchini with some bread and tapenade on, on top. So I'm gonna take a piece of this zucchini. Somehow we always manage to find somebody that drops there somewhere. I'm gonna take a piece of this bread with the tapenade. on. And then there's also this like, ooh, <laughs> sauce over here. So I'm gonna put the sauce on this piece of bread. Oh no, that's the zucchini. And then my piece of bread is over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this and put this on top of this. And then I'm gonna take the world's biggest bite. As I made a mess on my beautiful crust. The char on the sourdough is like 
burp. It's the right kind of burp. Zucchini. It matches really well. The zucchini is bland, and the sourdough is like a punch of flavor. The two together are pretty decent. I feel like it's a step up from our last visit here, but I don't think it's better than like pre pandy when we're coming here for lunch and cracking. I'm gonna give it three and a half out of five zucchinis. It's a good, it's a really good zucchini. It's just not $60 worth zucchini. Does that make sense? I'd rather go to like Steakhouse 71 or Kona or Citric House or something. I don't know. I don't think it's worth it. This, this place is only worth it for the atmosphere. This side doesn't do it justice. Let me let me let me let me, let me do a little DJ spin and flip it to the other side. This is a massive log of zucchini. Disney. What are you feeding your zucchini? This is not living with your land zucchini. This is like forest log where Belle's on her way to rescue Maurice style, like horses jumping over this size log. This, is, this thing is humongous. The, the zucchini is so big, it makes the bread look small. When we saw that it was a zucchini based entree, I had my doubts. Uh, if there was ever a dinner sized portion of zucchini, it would be this. So, we're going to cut into this monstrosity. Like we're chopping down wood. Like we eat five dozen eggs in the morning. Because I am roughly the size of a barn. We're going to cut off a little of the bread over here. With its, I'm assuming, the princess said olive topping on. Poor thing, she hates olives. We're gonna put that up there. We're gonna take this slice of I don't know what and put it on top of here. All the food today, I'm constructing. Always with the fancy food, they want you to build stuff. It's like it's fine dining Legos. That's right, I said it. There we go. Perfection. There's a lot going on in that bite. The zucchini isn't a strong flavor, but it is distinct. And you get the olive tapenade on top of a very, very crispy bread. You can definitely taste the char on the bread. 70% of that bite was olives and char, leaving about 5% zucchini, and the rest was the sauce. I like the presentation, but honestly, I don't like the flavor. It's like burnt bread with olives and a side of zucchini. Even though the proportions on the plate are way different in your mouth, that's what it tastes like. Two out of five. Here we have the trout almondine, another seafood dish I have not had. And I love new seafood dishes. Uh, this is a skin on trout with crab stuffed in it. Giving me good Little Mermaid vibes. Like maybe Sebastian didn't escape vibes. Like, not escape from LA, but escape from a castle sort of vibes. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it right open. So you guys can see the crab right in the middle of this big boy. It's kind of hard to see. Just flip up the toupee there, and it's just crab stuffed. It's just two halves of trout with crab in the middle. Put up a smaller piece for me to actually eat. And then we're gonna do some work on this. 
It's a little bit of a fixer upper, I'd say. There we go. Let's go number four. Definitely tell the crab apart from the trout. The trout, because fish skin, especially when you like saute or bake fish skin, it's very crispy and very salty. So the saltiness of the trout with that like richness of the ocean that you get with like crab, and they actually work very well together. Now, if you don't like very like, as I would say, ishi sort of like fish, like you don't like that fish taste, this might not be for you because the trout and the crab together are a very strong flavor, but very rich. Like you don't need any huge portion because like you're literally the tidal wave in the mouth. The crunchies on top don't really do a whole lot, but it's good fish. Is it the best fish you've ever had on property? Not even close, but it's slightly better than that. Three out of five. Yes, I save my vegetables for last. Kids, always eat your vegetables, especially the green ones. If you're lucky, you'll get superpowers. If not, you'll just grow up and not look like me. And to cook very well, not rubbery, and a nice crunch to them. Chew well without being like I'm, I'm chewing a tire. It's good. The veggies are good. Three out of five. before me but like his bread was a super burnt and he had a mutant size zucchini that was bigger than the asparagus I got from STK. I feel like my my dish was mediocre but would I come here for this? I don't know. Probably not. I don't think any of the dishes we've had here since like pre-pandy have been worth coming here outside of the atmosphere. Here we have the Boulevardier, the second of three cocktails are on the menu. This is uh, a, a Campari-based drink. It's meant to be simple. Think like comparable to like a, a martini-style drink, or but it tastes more like an old-fashioned sort of drink. I'm not the biggest fan of Campari, but I suffered through it because you guys need to know these cocktails are worth it. So I suffer for you. Which means that if you're still here for this part of the video, I think I've earned a life. Or two. I'm thinking. Two. I felt that in my spine. Campari is such a strong flavor. Even sipping it, it's like drinking bitter cough medicine. I have yet to find Boulevardier that I like. For those who are the more cocktail connoisseurs amongst our community, if I am drinking the broth, please tell me. I don't want to disparage this drink if it doesn't deserve the disparaging. Now, if it is how it's supposed to taste, then it deserves all the smoke, and I absolutely, with 135%, do not like this. If we met in an alley, shirt would come off. We're coming to blows, the watch is coming off, the magic band is coming off, we're going to tussle. Let me going to tussle. Want to have it a five minutes. I'm going to drink it. I'm not a quitter. But I'm not going to enjoy myself. This is your vegan dessert. You got these little, beautiful little breadies with some veggies and um, a little puffs. I'm struggling getting things together. Here we go. It was somewhat of a struggle, but we made it.
I feel like the base of this cake reminds me of like the base of the strawberry shortcake they, that they offer at um I don't know if I particularly care for this. I feel like the cake is a little too spongy. And the veggies just don't help enough. I, I want to give it a two and a half out of five desserts. I think the beast castle could do a little bit better. Especially when you have the gray stuff. Like, dishes should tell you this is not as good as the gray stuff. Just saying. I'm going to drink wine instead, I guess. I got a lot of that to drink. We have the lemon sponge cake with the assortment of berries. I feel like you had several variations of this. We always come back to this. By now, I really feel that you should have a vegan version of the gray stuff. I trust in the skill of Disney chefs, and I feel like they can do it. Like a liquefied lemon head with berries and cake. Cake cutting special. The flavors are punchy, but you gotta like lemon more than the cake to enjoy this. Two and a half out of five points. For the trio desserts, the standard trio, You've had it be our guest since the olden days, the old times. It's been a while since any of these are changed. The macaroon changes, the rest of it doesn't really change at all. We have a lemon macaroon. Look at that. Is it, we haven't seen a macaroon look this pretty since our uh, Chantel Tilly macaroons. We did a vegan macaroon video if you haven't seen that. You should watch that at some point. But this, that is a macaroon, nice and fluffy. Perfect, like sort of texture. It's no pistachio macaroon. I have icing all over my finger. But it's still pretty decent. I would give it three out of five points. We're gonna go right for the bonbon. Over here, all by its lonesome. Looking all small. Let's see if I can crack the bonbon. And I can. On top of a little bit of jam as well. Filled with a nice, rich mixed bucket. Consistently strong. Like a workplace rating. Three and five points. And the thing that everybody comes here for, everybody raves for. The gray stuff. Supposedly, you're supposed to ask the dishes. But they put the dishes on top of the gray stuff. So I'm going to eat the dishes. How am I supposed to ask the dishes how the gray stuff is? Either way, you have the white chocolate chip knocking to the side, with the white chocolate balls, and a little chocolate crust. I'm just gonna dive right in here. All the things. Great stuff is in fact still delicious. It's always the brightest spot in the trio, which is why it's it's dead center. I don't think it's a surprise to anybody. But most people come here. Is it worth suffering through the whole meal to get to this? Not always, but it's dessert. And given the other three, I'm giving this a three and a half out of five thoughts. It is the great stuff. It is delicious. Okay, we saw we ate, we heard out the dishes, we saw the beast. We did we all the things. My full complete. We didn't turn the beast human. The rose is still chilling. We've we've done like four or five iterations of the Our Guest menus now, yeah. and I, I really don't think we've found one that's better than pre-pandy lunch. You really love pre-pandy lunch. I really you love, love pre-pandy lunch different memory of pre pandy lunch. I guess I do. But I know that most people come here for the atmosphere, but I need you to tell me in the comments if you actually come here for the food. 
I want you to out yourself in the comments and tell me if you actually come here for the food. You know you don't come here for the food, you come for the beast. This is true. Given what you've seen, are you guys prepping for a visit back to be our guest? Let us know in the comments below. Visit anywhere else at Magic Kingdom you'd like to see us go, of course, that's always going to be a place to find us. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this, and... We have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We'll see you soon. And if you're not commenting, why is Bear even doing any of this? Honestly. The man would rather sit and play video games than bother with his kids. I've never heard that question before, but you heard the girl.